Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. My name is Aditya and on this channel I talk about Kubernetes, blockchain and software in general. And in today's video we are going to set up Min.io on Kubernetes cluster. We will also be running a client application using which we can create buckets, we can upload files, we can delete files as well. Uh, and that application is written in Golang. So, so without any further ado, let's start the video. And here I am in my Kubernetes development repository and uh, the link for this repo is given in the description so you can clone that out and here I'm in my folder which is min.io so if I show you the folder min.io what it has so it has a min.io.yaml file and a client folder and this min.io.dev file uh, has the Kubernetes deployment specification for min.io and the client application is having the code to run the client application so the by the way the client application is written in Golang so so now let's first see the uh, the cluster state so I have already configured the Kubernetes cluster it's a five node uh, Kubernetes cluster if I do k get node so you can see all of my nodes here and this cluster is running on 1.23 now uh, let's go and see what is the content of this minio hyphen dev file so let me open this in VS code so this is the minio uh, hyphen dev file and this is the deployment file this has uh, the content for creating the uh, namespace and we will be creating a namespace called minio hyphen dev and uh, all the resources that we will create we will they will be present inside this minio hyphen dev namespace now next we have the deployment and this deployment is the minio deployment and again you can see that this is present in minio hyphen dev namespace now the number of replicas that I want to have for this deployment is one and uh, if you see here in the container section this is the minio container and uh, we are running the latest image of minio at this moment and then we have configured some liveness probe and redness probe so that we can see if the container is up and not. Also uh, I have configured the resource uh, limits here so I have configured the request limit uh, request and the limits and uh, you can adjust this parameter based on your the based on your requirement now i have also uh, created uh, one volume mount here and this volume mount is mounting to slash dev inside the container and this volume is is just an empty directory uh, or a in memory volume so as uh, if the container will restart we will lose this volume because this is an in memory volume and here is the command which is starting up the minio server so here we are specifying the slash data directory which is where our uh, all the content of the minio server will be stored like the whatever buckets or files we will upload that will be stored inside this slash data folder and that we have anyway mounted using the help of volume mounts we are also specifying the console address here as 9090 so minio has two components one is the console uh, use that is a GUI console you using which you can access the application on the browser and the second uh, port that we have it is the is the API endpoint which is running on port 9000 and using which you can access the main IO via APIs now I can also show you uh, some of the environment variable that I have commented out here so here I have uh, uh, you can set the main IO access key and the access secret basically these are the username and the password for main IO you can configure uh, these here if you don't want to use the default credentials and uh, if we go bottom here I have defined a service which is a load balancer service and uh, using this service we can access the main IO on the browser now one more thing I have specified like two ports here so one is the port 9090 which is the console port or the GUI port from where you can access the main IO on your browser and the second one is 9000 port which is the S3 endpoint using which you can access the main IO APIs. Now let's quickly uh, deploy this uh, manifest onto the cluster so here I can just do k apply main IO hyphen dev and this has created the namespace this has created the deployment and the service as well we can check the status uh, we can do k get pods in minio dev namespace and we can see the pod is getting created so let's wait for a while uh, the pod is getting created and meanwhile let's see the status of our service so that service is a load balancer uh, type service so we will get a public ip and using that public ip we can access the minio so let me do k get service so uh, this is the minio service 
and this is the load balancer service this is the cluster ip and uh, soon uh, we will get the external ip as well and here you can see that we are exposing two ports first is the 9090 over which we will be running our uh, gui or the console application and the second port is 9000 uh, that our client application will use in order to connect to the uh, minio server let's see the status of pod once again just the pod is still in pending phase uh, let's wait for a while uh, to get the pod created okay so the pod is running now and now let's see the status of our service so let's do k get service and uh, we got the public ip so we got the load balancer ip and now uh, let's see the logs of this pod so let me do k log pod and uh, pod id is minio and uh, we can see that the pod is running fine like it's not giving us an error and uh, here you can see that the default credentials is minio admin colon minio admin and if you have to specify some uh, different username and the password then you can give uh, using these uh, environment variables so you can set these environment variables on the pod or on the deployment definition and then you can basically access uh, the minio using those credentials so now let's copy this uh, external ip and let's visit this port 9090 on the browser so let me just put the ip here and uh, okay so we can see we got the login page and uh, the default credentials are ad minio admin minio admin so let's use them okay so we are able to log in successfully and uh, we can see right now there is no bucket and let's first explore the options that are there in the ui so this is an object uh, browser through which you can explore or you can you can see all the files and the buckets that you have this is the second section which is the access key and this is where you can create the access keys for your client application so your client application can use these access keys in order to connect to the minio server then we have this bucket option using which you can create the bucket you can set up various rules on the bucket as well and then we have lot other options like you can set up the policies you can set up the identity like you can you can basically create the users you can create the user groups you can do a lot of things and then we have uh, one more section which is the monitoring section where you basically you can see the matrices of your uh, of your of your minio server you can see the logs if there is any uh, uh, you know uh, errors or if there is any info log you can see all those logs here you can do a bunch of options here but for now let's quickly go to the buckets and create a bucket here so you have to get, give the bucket name so let me give the bucket name as test and uh, here you can see some bunch of options like the versioning the object locking and the quota so when you will turn on this versioning it will create the versions of your document like if you if you will upload a file with same name multiple times then it will start versioning them and uh, you will have the later versions of that file as well like the previous version and then you can download those versions anytime object locking will help you in uh, basically uh, 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 restricting the deletion on those files and uh, for that you have to basically set the retention as well so let's say if i enable the versioning then uh, i also enable the object locking and i have to set the retention as well like how long i want to retain those files so by default it's 190 days but you can change it as per your requirement uh, and then there is quota as well like if you will enable this then it will set the maximum capacity of your bucket so you can change it like you, if you want to have the let's say your bucket should only contain or hold data of let's say 10 mb so you can basically set the quota here as well you can read more about these options here like you can see all the details here and anyway if you stuck somewhere you have the documentation link here you can basically go to the documentation read more about it so for now uh, let me just quickly create a bucket here so my bucket got created and i can see the details of those bucket here like i can see that the status that it is version the retention is also enabled and the validity is 180 days and the quota is disabled and the versioning object locking is enabled so uh, now let's uh, go to the object storage uh, object browser and here you can basically browse your uh, bucket you can see all the files here so right now we don't have any files but uh, as soon as we upload files we will be able to see those files here 
now uh, this was uh, for the deployment part but now let's go to the client application and from there let's try to upload some files and create the bucket as well so here is my vs code and uh, this client folder contains the application code for uh, connecting to uh, minio server and this is written in, May, in in golang so you can use this as your reference and here you have to specify some of the details like you have to give the endpoint so my in my case the endpoint is my public load balancer ip and followed by the s3 port so if you remember when we were discussing the deployment we were exposing two ports one was the 9090 which was the ui port and the second one was 9000 which is the api port then you have to give the access id and access key let's quickly go and create the access ids and access keys for this bucket so uh, i'll go to access keys let's quickly create them and uh, i'll create them let me just copy them here and let's copy the secret as well okay so now uh, this part is done uh, i don't need to download them now uh, now we have the client application and this client application is basically uh, uploading the file and it is also creating a bucket if that bucket doesn't exist so let's go to this upload file function and this is the uh, function new client which is going to return us the minio client and if you are using ssl like if your uh, minio server is running uh, with ssl then you can uh, set the use ssl as true but in our case we are not configured the ssl that's why i have given the ssl property as false now let's go to this upload file function and uh, this is coming from uh, this uh, file which is minio.go and here first we are basically making up the bucket so we are ensuring that if the we are trying to create the bucket and uh, if the bucket exists then we are skipping it but if the bu bucket doesn't exist then it will uh, be created now here is the function which is f foot object and this is the uh, place where we are uploading our file to main io uh, server let's go to main.go again and uh, here i have given the bucket name so my bucket name will be test 0001 and this is the file path which is going which we are going to upload so in my case i am going to upload this uh, go.mod file uh, in the main io server but you can use any file if you want to upload so now uh, let's go to terminal and let's run this application so let me just go to objects to object browser once more and we can see that right now we have only one bucket but as soon as we run our client application it will create one bucket and it will upload that go mod file so let me just clear this uh, let's go to client application and let's run this go run main dot go so it created the client object first and then it successfully created the our bucket and then it uh, uploaded our go dot mod file which is having a size of 909 bytes let's go to object storage uh, let's refresh this and here you can see we have a uh, one bucket here and if we go inside this we can see that our go dot mod file is here uh, which is having a size of 9090 byte now uh, this file is created without versioning so that's why we don't see any uh, uh, multiple versions so let's me just you know what i'm trying to say is if i try to run this application again it again upload the same file but uh, we are going to have only one version of that file here we don't see any versioning option so for that what we can do we can just go to this settings option and from here you can see that the current status of the versioning is unversioned so let's uh, enable the versioning here now the versioning is enabled and now if i go to uh, my object browser and if i try to upload the uh, file once again we should be able to see the versions as well so let me just run this again it up it again upload the file but now this time we should have the one more version of the go mod file so if i go here if i refresh it and uh, here we can see this inspect a uh, button so okay here we see this uh, display object version and uh, here we can see now we can see the two versions so first version was uploaded uh, at this 
moment of time but the second version that we upload this was at a later point of our time so we you can basically version your code as well or version your files as well and i have also written a blog for minio so you can like the link for that you can find in the description where i have discussed more uh, functionalities of minio like how you can uh, delete the files how you can list the files how you can uh, basically create the bucket with the versioning as well and those things you can check in the blog and yeah this is what i wanted to cover in this video so i hope you like the video and if you did like this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one